Hello everyone, welcome to Idle Insights. I am joined by my friend Tanya DePass, and we are going to be talking about uh, all things Idle Champions in D&D today. Uh, we will be taking questions, and also thank you so much for everyone who is jumping into the stream, who is looking for a code, and is taking, or very excited about Salise as I am. Uh, I've, I've actually had the benefit of getting to sort of roleplay with Salise. I was your dungeon master for a one-shot, <laughs> but... How has this all been for you to have uh, Celise suddenly in a video game and see her and play her and all that today? Uh, it's been wild, you know, just for as, uh, for as much as I love games, to actually be a video game character is, is totally wild. And especially have it combine D&D &D and video games. And the D&D &D character I get to play like every week with my buddies to then have her in this game. That's... I don't want to like call it a dream come true, but it's like really, really close. It's been surreal. What what uh it, we talked about this earlier in a video, but like what what is the thing that you like most about Celise? I, I love I, I really like Celise's I'm obsessed with shields. I do not know why. I agree with the Captain America thing. I think shields are the coolest thing. I wish they were a weapon uh in D and D itself. There's just something about a shield, and I, I like I love like knockbacks with shields and all of it. And I really like your character design because you get to move through all these little stances and affect everything in the game. And I think that's very clever design, but also like I think that speaks a lot to Celise's character as well. Yeah, I mean, what I like about her is that you know I'm playing this character that is older. She's not like super spry oh my god i'm gonna go adventure she's like seen some things she's had some life and uh the fact that i was able to use my shield like captain america and take off someone's hand it was pretty cool what uh, do you have a favorite Celeste moment in like all, all of role playing or, or was that it <laughs> like <laughs> um i'm trying to think so between just using her shield like that when we were trapped in avernus but also, uh, just a couple episodes ago, when we were we were um, running for our lives, and I will give. Well, we don't actually know who's after us right now, but the rivals are kind of being hunted. And when Shaka, who's also an idol champions, is like, "Oh, we trust you," and I'm like, "Do you though? Do you really?" <laughs> and we could have that kind of like CSI tense moment. <laughs> Yeah, well, what is that relationship with Shaka? How, how, how would you say that the, the chemistry between those characters is? Um, it's changed since since season eight, where I was the DM and everyone else was in jail. <laughs> and <laughs> and uh, Shaka became kind of a narc. <laughs> and so wow. the running joke is, yeah. <laughs> oh, he was such a narc. He was such an absolute narc. In jail, we're like, wow, though. Wow. Thanks, Shaka. Um, good to know what happens if we all get caught. You're going to be the one that sells us out. Good to know. Yeah, you're the first one to uh, roll. <laughs> and so, you know, because she is very morally gray, but she's willing to do the right thing. Uh -huh. She's like, you know, I'll do a lot of things to be on the morally gray side of right. But narking on my friends is not one of them. Um, and, you know, but also Celise was often Tarami dealing with her early vengeance on Zaraj. So mm -hmm. she, while she wasn't there, she heard about everything that happened. And then when she brought back uh, Brian and Eugenio's characters, uh, Kent and Virgil, there was the change dynamic of she's been with these two people while the rivals were doing whatever they were doing in, in jail in Revel's End. And now it's this awkward, okay, I'm back and I brought new people, but y'all are being weird how how did we get here kind of feel and that's gotta be i mean that has to be strange in some ways when you when you jump mm -hmm. into the dungeon master role and then you jump into the player role again mm -hmm. and you've missed out and yeah like characters have grown and your mm -hmm. perception of your character has to grow a little bit in that oh. like when you get a little bit of a vacation from them that can change things up quite a bit oh absolutely what's uh what's your favorite thing about the show so far that you've been experiencing like Ooh, um, this is gonna is it may sound corny, okay? But uh, getting to play D and D professionally, but getting to play with people I like and respect and enjoy hanging out with for the most part, and every Sunday, yes, it's work, but we get to have an adventure every week, and we get to chat beforehand, 
we get to hang out after virtually now because well the covid's and you know just re-engaging with that imaginative part of my of my brain and kind of getting the ideas out and getting to collaborate with other people and um just getting to you know i get to buy dice and it's a business expense <laughs> <laughs> very valid yeah i uh yeah i mean that's that's true you really miss it when you're not getting to play D. it, it is a deep void because um you know we don't all have money to like make an entire film by ourselves right and with our friends but like D kind of gives you that creative outlet you can have these like yep. massive ridiculous experiences and it doesn't cost you like you know a, a hundred thousand or millions of dollars to do it <laughs> so, yep uh what what initially when you like want decide like how i'm gonna play this character Celise? like what were the key inspirations do you think um <laughs> A little bit of Grace Jones, a little bit of uh, Lieutenant Uhura, mm -hmm. and a lot of Captain America, but not not Chris Evans. I like Chris Evans; he's cool. Mm -hmm. But our friend Christina Ariel as as Captain America. Her cosplay um, is amazing. Yeah. Yep. So kind of all of those where she's just like, I forget. Can we cuss? Can I not cuss? I, I mean, you, I moderate cussing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Like, I'm just not, I'm not every other word is going to be enough. I'm just like, you know, basically she's lived her life and seen some shit mm -hmm. and she's not the fresh faced level one adventurer that a lot of us start with. Cause we all started, I think level four or five just to begin with. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's, it's, it's one of those things where it's like, here's this idea I had of her. And I also realized after we had played maybe a season or two, I fell, I too fell into the kill your gaze trope because her whole motivation for becoming a paladin was her wife was killed in front of her. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'm like, I, and I was like, do I know how to make a character with a happy backstory? I guess <laughs> I don't. <laughs> yeah, it can be hard. Like, yeah, yeah. Ha ha having that death trope is, is definitely uh, difficult. Like, where is the character now from like where you started and now it at the, at, not the end, but like, w where do you feel like Selyse is and maybe where is Selyse heading? Um, Selyse is in a, she, she wasn't a very dark place while, while she was off screen doing her thing. Uh, the season that I DM'd, she's coming back to it, but she, she wants time to kind of, you know, still deal with the aftermath of losing touch with tear and that has she shifted from morally gray to morally dark with taking on some blood hunter um, mm -hmm. skills and embracing that, not just being like, oh, well, you know, it's a little blood. No one cares. And she's like, <laughs> oh, I'm, I'm doing blood magic to, to do my job. How did I get here? Kind of thing. What are some of your your uh, favorite heroic characters? You mentioned like Captain America in general. Are you a Com Captain America fan, or is it mainly just seeing that cosplay of, of hers? I mean, I'm a fan. Um, you know, like I, I'm, I'm a fan of it. You know, I fell in love with with Cap, with Chris Evans playing Captain America because he's just like, it's like, did someone just like create Chris Evans to become <laughs> Captain America? Right, and. But then, like, just seeing the the great way that Christina does the cosplay, and I'm like, oh yeah, Sam, the Winter Soldier, you know, all these iterations of Captain America. It's not always like the homegrown farm farm boy that did good and you know got the magic drugs that made him strong. Mm -hmm. um, and I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> um, got you. I got you. <laughs> He, he he lends something to the role, like like it, does. and I think that's true of like a lot of the ca that cast. But like I I, I believe him. <laughs> also, yeah. Chris Evans kind of is Captain America. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I, he's someone that you know. If if I saw him walking around Tribeca, I would hopefully get a chance to say hello, just because I think he's really cool. And plus, he has a nice dog. Uh -oh. um, <laughs> I'm like, he has a dog and he's like, so, and he's been very open to you about his mental health issues. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think that kind of openness and vulnerability and, and, 
So, um, so yeah, you're a fan. Yeah, I'm a fan. Yeah. What, uh, what, w- so you've, you've gone a couple of times to Dungeon Master professionally now. Mm-hmm. What's, uh, what, what are your key takeaways and what's your advice now being a professional Dungeon Master? Uh, being a pro Dungeon Master is a lot more work. I mean, it's, it's work anyway, being a DM. I'm not trying to say it's not work when you're not on screen. Yeah. Um, but you have to think about more timing. You, you can't just be like, okay, well, if we don't get this thing, it's fine. We'll, we'll get to it next week. When you are a DM on a stream show, you've got a finite number of hours and time per episode that you're doing this. You have to think of it in terms of story beat. You also have to think about, I can't lollygag. I can't stop everything and look up a role or something like that. And, and I don't want to make it seem like I must know every single role and rule in order to uh, in order to be a DM, but you have to think a lot more economically at the table, as it were. Yeah. Uh, um, and you also have to learn to let things go. Where if I don't get to do cool thing, if I don't get to get my players to X place, it's a okay. Yeah. You you won't it won't be the end of the world if you don't do the super cool DM idea that you had. Um, because it'll come up or it's not. And also learn to trust your players. Yeah. They're, for the most part, they're not going to troll you. Um, but also realize you can have all the plans in the world and your players will ruin that in probably the first 10 minutes. It's very consistent. <laughs> which do you enjoy? Now, which do you enjoy more, would you say? Play, being the dungeon master or getting to play just be Solis? Ooh, um, in terms of rivals, probably being Solis, I did enjoy DMing, but it was more of a challenge than I expected. <laughs> um, I, I tried to have like Ocean's Eleven, and then we got more CSI. Right, right, yeah. Oh, yep. I know that feel. <laughs> yep. Yeah, yeah. It it does never go as you think it's going to go, but that's the yeah. fun. Like I do like the chaos, but it's a. Uh, Certainly, like, being a Dungeon Master is, like, live editing. Like, any time. Yep. I mean, just even saying, hey, you need to go into this goblin cave is, like, a whole sh- whole two hours of, like, well, yep. let's investigate the goblin cave. Like, who's been in the goblin cave before? Like, <laughs> it just goes right. on. Which is kind of, like, the great thing about D&D. But, yeah, I mean, yeah. if there's a door, you know, there will be a debate. <laughs> or there'll be the here's this NPC that I meant you to talk to you maybe one time. Yeah. And that's the NPC that they want to get to know. They want to know their life story. You haven't even made up a name for this NPC. And yet here we go. And they're like, so NPC, what's your backstory? How'd you wind up in this par or tavern or wherever you, you find them? And you're like, I don't have a name for them. Hold on. While you go quickly Google names. So you've been interviewed quite a lot. You've had a year. Uh, mm-hmm. in a year during a year of years already. Uh, yep. This has to have been like a transformative experience for you. I, 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 I you were always like the nicest person at the con, uh, cause you know, I don't like crowds. Um, <laughs> but you have a very calming and soothing presence <laughs> and you are incredibly nice. Uh, but you, you suddenly were very much thrust into a lot of attention. Um, in a big way, what what's what is that like in 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 such a small amount of time? That's that's a very unique experience. I remember watching that live stream that blew up. And, and, yeah, and I can't imagine what that felt like. Um, I mean, well, you know, for the benefit of those that I don't know in person, right? Um, I I too am an awkward being in person. Um, I can I can fake it till I make it when it comes to being extroverted and out and about. Um, but it's awkward, it's weird, and in some cases a little stressful, and a lot stressful. And um, it's been interesting, but it's also been kind of, it's been a lot of work to to maintain healthy boundaries. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that you and I talk about this a lot, and, and some folks we know in the chat have seen us both talk about parasocial relationships and reminding people that it's cool that you support what we do, that you like we we are doing on our streams and in our work. But remember that subbing to someone on Twitch, giving them a few bucks on Patreon, following them on Twitter, 
does not mean that you know that person. And so we, I've had to kind of reinforce that reminder, mm-hmm. which is it's hard, but it's a necessary thing for um, peace of mind. And, you know, one of my friends is in the chat who um, said that I'm literally the nicest person. And I am 99.9% of the time <laughs> until I decide I don't like you. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then once I decide I don't like you, it's a whole other thing. Um, but, but, you know, I try to remind people that, you know, the people that you see on screen, the people that you see that are performing, that are playing D and D, that whatever they're doing, that you're supporting, they are people at the end of the day. Um, you know, and, and it's, it's been an interesting, weird journey. You know, I'm, for those who don't know, I don't live in New York. I'm here because of the Tribeca Film Fest. Still waiting on the okay to talk about one thing, but, um, but I'm here because I'm on the games jury and I'm getting to do stuff like that because of the, the ripple effect of that stream mm-hmm. and having a higher profile. So it, it's weird. It's also, you know, um, it's weird because no, I can't think of anyone that wants to be a celebrity that sees what celebrities and not that I'm calling myself one. If, if I ever, call no, no, you're, 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 you're okay. Me. Don't, no, 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 no. Um, I, I totally get it. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. But, but you know, the people who say, Oh, I love to be famous. They want, they see people like Beyonce, whoever. And I'm like, do you really want to have people that don't know anything about, you know, nothing about who you are as a person watching literally everything you do and, and, and Stan culture is creepy. Stan culture, you know, has people online fighting about fighting for the honor people that don't even know they exist. And it, it, it's weird. And I never want to be put on a pedestal. I don't want to be treated like I'm special. I'm just, I'm very lucky in that I get to do a thing I love as part of how I earn my living. Yeah. And I always try to make people remember that because I've had people like say, oh, my God, it's you. I'm honored that you're in my stream. And I'm like, OK, cool. I'm I'm just going to lurk now. And then I eventually run away because don't put people on pedestals. It's 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 cool that they are where you think you want to be. But at the end of the day, you're still a person and any of this could go away at any point. So, yeah, and I think it's particularly weird if you are someone who never wanted to do uh be in the limelight and you're and, and for introverts in general, it's a lot different. I, I mean, we have a lot of friends who were just born extroverts. Um, mm-hmm. you and I are very much not, <laughs> yep, yep, so yes. it has taken a long time to learn how to be like talk like a human robot, uh, for me, <laughs> like on camera. Um, it's it's difficult enough in life, uh, but yeah, I think extroverts have a, a, a better time of it. But I've never understood the desire to be famous. Uh, it's such a strange uh, thing. But I've largely had an extremely positive experience because of the D and D community and everything else. But yeah, you with everything that happened for you, I I, I was as curious and like just sitting there watching it happen um, was was fun. It w- was almost funny because I know you you. <laughs> <laughs> like you're like the last one that would have wanted this to happen maybe like it like yep. wasn't like to-do list become famous be part of all oh, God, these things no. <laughs> uh and yes dylan still but i should be able to disclose that thing if not late today then tomorrow hopefully yeah uh in terms of is there are there things that you want to do in the future like do you want to run another game again uh, do you want to explore new characters? Uh, is there anything that you're kind of chomping at the bit? Despite the things that you're not allowed to talk about right now. <laughs> um, I was about to send a text to ask, and I just talk about it now since I'm on this, since we're here. Yeah. I haven't gotten an answer yet. Um, I would love to do, I would love to do maybe a Rivals 2.0, where maybe we jump ahead a few years in the future. Mm-hmm. Or we kind of go back and see how everyone began their life as an adventurer. Um, You know, and I've put it out there and I've said that um, I'd love for us to get where Critical Role is. And uh, actually, both Sharif and I were talking about this, uh, prompted by a tweet from our friend Jasmine Bular about the people who watch our shows and bring up our shows only in the context of diversity. 
Mm-hmm. And what I would love is if people gravitated toward our content, not because they want to go, oh, well, my favorite shows are on break or I can't find black people who play D&D. We're, and that's when we, we our names get listed in these Twitter mm-hmm. threads. And it's like, but I exist outside of Rivals of Waterdeep. Everyone on that show does something really cool and really fun. We all stream. We all do content creation. Sharif is a math tutor. He talks about inclusion in gaming, but that's not all he does. Right. You know, while I do run a not-for-profit about inclusion, that is not the sum all of what I do. Um, you know, I have a degree in, in usability that I don't get to use or talk about. I like musicals. I like fighting games. No one ever asked me about that stuff. Um, you need you know, a musical fighting game. I do need a musical fighting game because <laughs> I will make that happen. Um, and, uh, you know, Brian is, he does cooking streams. He does other stuff. Uh, Eugenio is literally live right now enjoying some Mass Effect. And he's a theater person. You know, like we all have things we bring to the table, but we only ever, people only ever talk about Rivals or Shakar or other shows when it comes to, but I need diversity. I need to check my box this week. Mm. And what I would absolutely love is for people to see the value of what we do and not just go, I want to feel like I'm doing something. And once a week on Friday, throw out a list of, oh, here's these diverse shows you should watch. Um, I would love to run a game for like you and Lauren, Matt, Arisha, Christina, B Dave, stuff like that, mm-hmm. and just have it be a fun game and not a an event. Um, I have, like to be able to without purpose, right? Like you know, with, right. with, with just like without like let's just play D anD D. Can we guys? Can we just play D anD D today? <laughs> or even sacrilege, maybe play something beside D anD D. Right, right, right. <laughs> Um, I don't know what you're talking about. There's only one tabletop game that I'm aware of. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> well, for the purposes of this call, there's only D and D. But and I'd like to run a game that is not, um, you know, not always streamed. It'd be great to just roll out of bed in my PJs, yeah, and uh, and just get on a Zoom call and talk and BS with my friends, have a beer, and not have to be on. Yeah, being on, I mean, role play, like, you can be way more laid back. Like, you know, the difference between live streaming a D&D game and, the, and your own personal game can be very different. I, I was very fortunate in that, like, I had a bunch of theater friends because they were, like, in college, but I was still in high school. And they were in college, and we played Star Wars for, like, three years. And it was great uh, because we were all, like, very, very big into role playing, and that was really fun. But you're right, like, you know, you can afford if you're playing at home to just like lay back and watch everyone just do their thing and you can do more terrible things <laughs> sometimes in a, a home game more evil vengeful things or whatever um but there is something about being on for a live yeah. stream like D D live stream D D can be a very different creature uh and being able to take your time and you know go on the bathroom break and just hang with friends is really great uh yeah if you want to run a game i'll be in it um, so <laughs> I, I like to play, I, I you're, you're going to be cursed with Avon though. So that's very high, very likely. <laughs> that's fine. Well, I mean, cause that brings up the, uh, the, the discussion about emotional bleed too, of we're playing a game, but you and I are friends. Yeah. Even if our characters may butt heads. Oh yeah, totally. No. Yeah. Yeah. Like, uh, I am definitely not my character. I am certainly like mischievous. Like I like mischievous characters and I like being funny, but I am not uh, a trickster god. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that that you are admitting to publicly. Uh oh my god. Uh so um yeah that that yeah I, I I'm not I am not admitting to any crimes of any kind. Uh what. What what uh, if you weren't playing Sleece, who would you play? Have you had a secondary character that you've gone gone Ooh, to? Well, like, I mean, play there's that you were, Fanon. Like... Uh, well, there's Fanon Black Dice Society, and based on the backstory I gave her, I would love to play more of her kind of maybe up to maybe starting with when she met Mark Mir's character of um, Brother Ezra mm-hmm. or Brother Uriah, who's a cleric of Ezra. Um, 
and you know kind of doing that but i'd also love to play like characters i've played in one shots um i would love to just you know make like a, a rowdy tiefling or something and just be chaotic as i could be because i really get to play bad like bad characters um you know i i i do love my evil characters i really do right? yeah I, I, I yeah. recently, um, uh, I recently, I've been struggling, uh, which is funny because I saw Loki and it was like, it was a friend sent to me and like, this is both about your character and about how you feel about your character all in one show. Uh, but I've been struggling, I've been struggling with like, okay, where is the, 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 the mixture of mischievous and also, but being kind to the rest of your party members. And like, I felt like I crossed into a line of being cruel to party members, but like, I love evil. I love, like, if someone is a bad character in the game, an NPC, I'm going to kill them. Like, (laughs) that's just kind of the character I play. Uh, It's it's that darker kind of hero, the hero that does the thing that's necessary. I mean, even Batman um, has done some pretty questionable things in the past, but... Yeah, but remember, Batman is basically just a rich dude with a with a vengeance plot. Yeah, yeah. Um, Valid. He's not super powered. He's just trained, and I feel like he is kind of. This is probably get me in trouble with people, but honestly, I don't care. Um, people that, you know, yes, he had a terrible thing happen. Yes, he saw his parents murdered, but he never gets over it. He uses everything at his disposal to get back at, at who turns into his moral enemy and then he won't kill him. We would draw a lot of like interesting questions. And, and I, I do completely agree because you, he's Batman and the person he pretends to be like the human Bruce Wayne is not him. Like he just has become right. this one note thing. That is unmovable a, and un, unshakable. Whereas Superman, I feel is like most is actually just Clark Kent who has a day job um, of being a hero. I, I, yeah. yeah. Well, and there's also you know Superman is literally an immigrant right. to the to the Earth, but everybody kind of ignores that. Part yeah, of conveniently. So sometimes, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, people people decide to kind of gloss over. I'm like. He he is not from Kansas <laughs> at all. He is he is not he is not homegrown, and you know at the end of the day he just wants to he wants to do good because he's lost everything. All he has is his found family. Whereas Batman is all about vengeance, but he won't take that final step, and that's 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 where it's like oh, but you know, but Batman's not evil. He won't kill. Or is it Superman that won't kill? I don't remember. Neither of them will kill. Like, Batman won't kill either. Um, and, but Batman but, seems completely unwilling to, like, at some point you're just like, because these villains get out over and over again, and there is a higher body count in Arkham, right? Like, mm-hmm. you know, and there's a higher body count in Gotham in general than Metropolis. Like, yep. Metropolis is very much New York on a summer day. Um, and you know, Gotham is New York at night, uh, in the 1960s. Right. Yeah. Like, <laughs> so well, and also how many times can we get a reboot of, of the Batman story and see this kid traumatized? Like how come no one took this kid to therapy? Right. Yeah. They just no. left him alone in this giant house to brood about his parents' death. And the only person he has for company is the Butler. And I'm like, don't people have child services? And weren't there any other members of the Wayne family who could have took him in anything? Well, I mean, that's a that's an interesting thing you brought up about Solis. Uh, what uh, you you mentioned like the death of your wife and how that was not problematic, but like stere- like you, you feel like that's a bit of a stereotype that's ha- that happens particularly with gay characters as well. Mm-hmm. Like, what are some of those st- stereotypes that you feel like should be avoided, or m- maybe it's good. Not like even should be, but like, hey, maybe we should move on from this dialogue when it comes to making our heroes, both in D&D and comics. Um, you know, the kill your gays were somewat, or the tragic gay, which is what I wound up doing with Salisa without meaning to, of either they're never with someone, they always, or they find someone, that person dies tragically and that ruins their life and they can never find love again, mm-hmm. or they they finally accept 
that they're queer, but then every waking moment is about how terrible it is to be queer. And oh my God, my life would be better. And it's like, and it's like you could tell the the kind of anti queer mindset of of a people probably assuming that's a choice or if only I could rid myself of this, things would be better. And it's like, you have a whole secret identity and you're a superhero. That I think that kind of tops out the fact that you're also queer, whatever flavor of queer that is. Um, and also just not having the stereotype of mental illness as your MO mm. and not queer coding villains. Because you know villains are usually very foppish. They're very effeminate, very feet if they're, if they're masculine coded. Um, or they're they're quote unquote manly if they're women, and just this idea of mental illness being the mo, or something drove them crazy or whatever, and that's why they're now a villain. Or this one traumatic thing happened, they lost everything, and now everything's about vengeance. But it's also topped with, and of course they're crazy. Right. I mean, Arkham Asylum is just not the best place for all the criminals like is everyone like why is that where all the gotham criminals wind up and arkham is never portrayed as a good place to go to get healthy like they're they're, they're nope. it, like that it's clearly a completely dif- dis- dysfunctional system there like where they're like there is a- absolutely no attempt to improve the situation yeah batman is interesting all. in that sense like everyone is kind of like a fragment of batman's mind too mm. um but yeah, like far too often, all of that becomes like a, a stereotype. They're like, well, how do we like kind of like make our villain more interesting? And like, oh, well, we'll we'll make them queer, or we'll give them a mental illness, or we'll give them a scar, or a missing hand, or they'll be Darth Vader, and that, that tends to be the trope. I think my favorite villains are the ones who absolutely believe they're right, and that's it. There's no tragedy to it or anything. They just believe it, and that's the thing that has always scared me growing up. And like, like Lex Luthor. He, we don't appreciate his genius. How dare we? I, I appreciate, I like a character who is just like unrepentantly just evil, like his ego. Cause he thought he was the best that humanity could have. And then you have a character who, like you said, is an immigrant who shows up and they are the ones who step into the limelight and they're the ones that get all this attention. And Lex Luthor just cannot let it go nope. with all of his money and all of his intellect he could help solve all these problems in the world, and he's so focused on on Superman, he sees nothing else. That's kind of an interesting villain. Not every villain needs to be relatable, mm-hmm. but I do love I do love a villain because every every bad almost every bad person I've ever met, uh, he either has is uh, f- flat out does not have any emotions <laughs> because I was a journalist once. Uh, and uh, was on the crime beat, so occasionally you would run into literally a serial killer. Or, oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, or someone who just absolutely believes they're right and never question themselves, and that's the yep. scariest thing to me every time. Someone who does not question themselves. Uh, nope, they, they literally don't care. Nothing will convince them that anyone else is, is right beside them. Or like a, a trend I've been seeing in some game plots and other things where they're the, they have convinced themselves they're the only ones that can save humanity, usually by wiping out humanity and starting. Right. From scratch. <laughs> that's, that's coming up more often. I feel like, uh, uh, weirdly lately. Um, I, yeah, that's, 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 that's been a strange thing to, to, to watch. Like what's the solution? We wipe out everybody. Okay. Or 50% if you're Thanos. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I feel like we need to check his math a bit on that one in terms of like yeah. <laughs> the resources yeah. are finite. I'm like, is it? <laughs> and I mean, wiping out 50%. I mean, uh, I don't know if you know the, the <laughs> how populations grow, uh, <laughs> but I don't think that's going to quite cut it. Uh, yeah. if, if that's what you're going for, not trying to encourage him to like destroy more people, but certainly. Yeah. yeah. Um, what? So, so we kind of talked about those heroic tropes and those villainous tropes. What's the favorite favorite villain that you've ever run into in D anD D? Ooh, I I kind of want to say Avrin. <laughs> Who? Do you do you consider Avrin a villain or no? Uh, he, I do consider him a villain. To be completely honest, like he he's not like hopefully anti uh, K 
character. Uh, mm-hmm. So, uh, yeah, uh, I, 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 I think I think he is villainous for sure. Like he does not have he has good intentions, but he is definitely evil for the sake of good, which gives him a little okay. bit more wiggle room in terms of what he does and does not do. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I'll, I'll um, but I am very uh, actually not, but I am very honored that I am your favorite villain. <laughs> My character is at least. Yeah. Because yeah, I mean the the villains that we've run into so far, at least with um, at least with rivals, are kind of villains of our own making. Because Zaraj is a villain, well, not of our own making, but Zaraj is someone that Selyse also got buddy buddy with and had no clue until she had that epiphanal moment of oh oh boy you this is who i've been looking for oh oh boy um b dave is is not a villain irl so i will not say b dave um <laughs> i hope he's not because we're we're, we're screwed <laughs> i mean he's like playing a long long con <laughs> Um, I mean, he does have that get, he does have the TTRPG gift award for, uh, best evil DM, but if B Dave were truly evil, right. He's so, he's that person that'd be so smart. We'd have a hard time beating him if he was evil. Um, uh, I am sure that he is not evil and I'm trying to think in, in black dice, it's hard because we've. Some of us have already met Strahd. Some of us have met Aslan. Mm-hmm. But there's also the brain in the jar that Nora's character carries around that I'm sure is going to kill us all. I love it. I love brains in jars. I don't know why. <laughs> brain in jar is going to kill us. Yeah, well, I mean, it's got to eventually. I mean, it is. It, 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 it's. It, it's <laughs> you've got brain in the jar. That's like introducing a yeah. gun in the first act of a, of a play. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So, quick question for you. Speaking of questions, I, I see that our our favorite Obo Lauren has snuck a question. Yeah, in the chat. can can we talk a bit about uh, Into the Motherlands and any hint on some stretch goals? How is Into the Motherlands going right now? The Kickstarter. Um, the Kickstarter yesterday, I think during the show that I was not on because I'm in New York, um, broke the two hundred fifty thousand dollar stretch goal. That's amazing. And I need to look and see what it is because I don't actually know. That was a B Dave secret. Um, <laughs> so I need to see what it is while we're chatting. Um, and then I don't know because honestly, I I felt like we were going to fund. I had no clue we'd fund this quickly. Um, B Dave has put on here for $250,000 stretch goal an original 10 page into the motherland's comic book written by B Dave Walters will be added to all tiers. That's fantastic. And he has added, Oh, we saw the graphic for 250, but um, yeah, that is, that is what's going to happen. Awesome. That's fantastic. What what was this Kickstarter experience been like? I know Kickstarters can be a little stressful and a little nerve wracking sometimes. Um, it's been a whole lot. Um, it's been stressful mostly because again, I, I am a realist in that we are a group of all POC and black folks and that I did not expect our Kickstarter to have the momentum it did. Mm -hmm. And that's not downplaying anyone's talent. That is just, I've seen too many Kickstarters that are not uh run by a certain demographic in the rpg world right. struggle i mean b day one of b dave's own kickstarters had to have that 11th hour save yeah so yes he's done really successful kickstarters it's the fourth one he's like put together but i didn't expect to be at this point with still nine days left to go right um it's been stressful some people have been frankly rude and obnoxious and um treated us as if we're scammers right and you know without giving that person any credit it it actually made more people aware of what we're doing so you know it was a backwards way to get views but you know it has been very stressful mainly because you know i mean you know you know more of the insider baseball than we can talk about but you know for many sundry reasons uh, we are 
trying to make sure that we bring the best mechanics to the game as possible. Right. Whether that is still Cortex Prime, whether that's anything else. But um, people have taken that as their kind of Don Quixote thing to tilt at the windmill of we must be lying. We must yeah. be. Which makes absolutely uh, no sense because each and every one of you are extremely established people in the TTRPG industry, mm-hmm. also making comic books and books and also designing games. All, yep. And so it's just ridiculous, unfounded nonsense. And it, yeah, it's it's not worth, I mean, it's just ridiculous, but that's sometimes the attention that you unfortunately get. But despite this, Motherlands is still doing quite well. So Yeah, I mean, a quarter of a million dollars, people. But here's the thing. I feel like there's some so, confidence in it. <laughs> there's some confidence. Um, but, you know, just a quick Kickstarter primer for those people that don't know how they work. Yeah. So before we see any of this money, don't think that we're just going to get a quarter million dollars in the bank when the Kickstarter ends. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, Kickstarter gets their fees. Um, we, are do, we are spending some money on marketing. So they get their payout. Mm -hmm. um we have to pay people then we have to set aside money for taxes um taxes because this will be taxes income and i will cry for my 2021 taxes on the business side um but then we have to pay people we have to pay artists we have to commission art we have to commission maps all the extra physical things that people ask for adds to the total of what we need to fulfill physical books we have to consider shipping outside the u.s how VAT taxes, all of those things Mm -hmm. before we see a dime. And it's 14 to 30 days before the money actually gets transferred to your account. So we're not going to see any of this money until July at the earliest. Right. So it's not like we were rich. People still have to fulfill the Kickstarter. So, um, yeah, there is this kind of illusion. You see this big number and you're like, you you can't imagine the taxes on it. There are the Kickstarter gets their cut. Um, even the pay, the way it gets paid takes a cut out of it as well. Mm. And then, at least with my experience in Kickstarter, you get taxed for the full amount of what you raise before these fees yep. uh, given by Kickstarter and by you know the company that handles those payments. And so you're paying basically another company's taxes on it as well. And, and, and you got to yep. pay your people. Yep. And then, you know, you have to pay out fairly and we are paying above the industry standard for our writing and for our maps and for our art. Yeah. Because in, in our house, we pay people and we pay them well. It's kind of a nice thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's a lot of work. Like this is this is like uh, this is you saying I will do X amount of work and it's so much work. <laughs> yeah. I mean, on the only other Kickstarter I've done, which is for emote pins, uh, um, enamel pins in my emotes because people wanted it I actually lost money Yeah. after all was said and done I lost about $1,500 I, I had a Kickstarter and we lost money we lost so much money we, we, we were way in the hole because we you know, the travel expenses the taxes the fees and everything mm-hmm. else just became so prohibitive and it was just so much harder and this was early days of kickstarter right mm-hmm. so we didn't we didn't know <laughs> what were we like quite yeah. like how rough it was going to be um thank yeah, you to I, everyone who's in chat by now by the way who've gotten the notification and are are uh in chat and talk t- talking um Please ask questions if you have any questions, and we'll do our best to answer those questions in chat. Uh, we're talking to Tanya DePass, who is involved in the Motherlands Kickstarter, who also just got a character named Celise in Idol Champions, who is amazing. And a surprisingly complex character, by the way. I know this because I'm voicing a video about Celise. And, uh, <laughs> like. like it's great. Like all these little stances affect every little thing about Celise, and it's actually really fun. Um, but uh, so, how many more days did you say is left in the Motherlands Kickstarter? Uh, let me check. Because I've, you know, you've got so much going on. How can you like? Don't I, I would have anxiety just keeping that in my head all the time. Um, we are now in single digits. We have nine days to go. It ends at two a.m. Pacific on June nineteenth. So. Uh, next Saturday. So before we have our next episode of Rivals, not this week, but next week, the Kickstarter will be over. Okay. And so you are in another show. You are in Black Dice. Yep. How are you liking Black Dice Society? 
Oh, I love it because, um, you know, I, I get to just show up and play. I don't have to do anything extra. I don't have to produce the show. I just get to be there and step into Fen's shoes and get be get to get to be a little mean and rude. And I love it. Um, and you know, the way that we all have gotten comfortable around each other and, you know, I adore Mark Muir in general, but he's just so expressive. He acts without saying a word. Mm-hmm. He react like for those of you that watch actual play shows, some you'll always have that person that their facial expressions tell a story. Yeah. Even if he's not in the scene, he just reacts and it's, it's beautiful. He's just and, in it for a voice and, actor and, too. I, I yeah. imagine voice actors do it like to help their voice. Yeah. Like, yeah, I never like Mark Mirror is like way more expressive than Commander Shepard or like any character he's ever yeah. played. <laughs> um, and you know, and and you know, DJ Knight and I have been friends for years, and I get to like back to back nights play RPGs with him, and it's just seeing him enjoy this so much. Yeah, and seeing him enjoy getting into his character Desmond, and the little impish smile he gets when he gets to like wolf out, it's amazing. Um, and like, I didn't know Sage or Nora or Becca very well before this game. And, you know, just the way that we all click and mesh together, especially now that we've been doing what, 12, 13 episodes. Yeah. It's, it's just been so fun to just dig right in. And Fen is not a nice person because you don't wind up in the mist if you're a nice person. And uh, I get to just have those real both emotional moments with my friends and and carry some of that over but then i also get to have these kind of really great rp moments that mean the world you know right. yeah ravenloft is a uh, a sharper edge dnd where things get exposed mm. either <laughs> either your guts yep. or your or who you are <laughs> one way or the yeah. other yeah and um without spoiling it too much you know I'm trying to think of how to explain this without spoiling it too much because if you've never seen Black Dice and then you start watching it, some things are revealed later on. Um, but Mark's character has some interesting personality shifts, shall we say. But when you see him be Brother Uriah and then suddenly this other character, we're sitting there with him in the Zoom call and we're still like... <laughs> <laughs> it's like It's just like a switch got yeah. hit. Oh, we got we got a couple of questions here. Uh, so, uh, awkwardish panda, that's fantastic. Uh, how do you like everyone getting to dress as their characters on Black Dice Society? I actually like cosplaying a lot uh, in 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 games. I feel like that adds to it. What, how do you feel about it? I enjoy it, although I made the mistake of buying a heavy brocade coat right before the show started. Yeah, and it's summer, so yeah. that was a bad <laughs> idea. On my um. Yeah, but I enjoy it. You know, it's fun. I just need to, once I'm fully unpacked, find my elf ears and finally fit my teeth that I bought. Because I, I like went whole hog. I bought like several styles of elf ears. I bought a few kinds of different vampire teeth to see how I could talk in them. But then I moved, so a lot of stuff is still in a box. Um, but it's fun. It you know it's a challenge, especially in warmer weather because we're a bit gothic. Yeah. Um. But it's fun, and at the very least, I can put on a black T-shirt and a, a cloak and call it a day. I need to get me a good cloak. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like a nice, somewhat breathable cloak. I, I've seen people walk into live streams with like a fur cloak, and I'm like, no, buddy. You must have the best <laughs> air conditioning God gave anybody, because it couldn't you, be you, me. You, you don't want to do it. Oh, uh, nope. it's a question from my wife, Megan Kenrick. Uh, <laughs> Hi, <laughs> what, Megan. What are some th- things about your champion that you're excited mm-hmm. about? Sorry if you already talked about this. What are some things that you are excited about? Like, what was the one thing that you're like, that's it, that's Elise? Oh, her her, uh, her ultimates and getting to use lightning and throwing her shield. I'm so excited for that. The throwing the shield ability. I th- it just looks really cool. I, uh, it, all of it's cool. Like the knockback is really cool and seeing the shield not, you know, s- smack people. It, it's uh, you are you are like Captain America right in Endgame kind of level of like throwing that shield around. 
Yep, and I I love it. I I would love to get a proper like replica commissioned, but then I could probably never take it anywhere because oh yeah yeah they're probably not gonna let that game under the metal detector. I mean I could ship it. (laughs) Yeah yeah. But then I wanna I would need a case or I have to it would have to be like my carry on, but then it wouldn't fit anywhere. It would be weird. But I just want one for the wall behind me. Yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, he's always get kill. It'll probably take a few years (laughs) to make a full metal shield. Uh, we got another question here. Uh, is Into the Motherlands a complete standalone mm-hmm. RPG system, or is it D20? Yeah, no, they don't. They, they are currently uh, um, working on that system right now, actually. Yes, but uh, it is not going to be D20. It is not going to be a, a D&D clone. Right. If it if we if we don't get to use Cortex Prime, we're just going to come up with our own system. But it will not be a it will not be a D20 system. Yeah, that's one thing we know. Yeah, so not that's that's still to be determined. Uh, so, but it's the setting that I care the most about, which that's that's really the the biggest thing. <laughs> like that, that's that's the deal. Uh, so that's oh, do we have another question? Did Sleece go through the same pain at, as as Falcon did when learning to throw the shield? That's a, it, boy, it's got to be harder to throw a shield. <laughs> oh, it is, but she like at, le- at least as a full paladin, she was. She was just ridiculous. It was part of her training because she got trained that everything, anything you lay your hands on is a weapon, be it your sword, your shield, another person. Right. I I do I, I do have to say like, I do remember that about the, you know, watch it, watching Falcon try to learn to throw the shield. I tried to learn throwing knives. Oh. The rage of like, do you know how? I mean, it really is like ninety percent of the time you're hitting the handle against what you're trying to hit. I don't know how people get so good at it. I eventually got a pretty good handle on it, but like that was hard. I can't imagine throwing a shield with accuracy. Uh, so I appreciate watching a whole episode of it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's um, cathartic. I'm just. I can't imagine doing that for distance. I, I mean, what? But with cap shield is different. It's vibranium. It's designed for throwing. Yeah. So yeah. Lisa's shield is a tower shield. It's not really meant for it, but she really? does do anyway. <laughs> like, like not balanced at all. Like, <laughs> like your, nope. your shield. At least you could like take a person's head off with the spike and like the pointy end of the shield. I guess. Um, oh yeah, Cy- uh, Awkwardish Panda brought up Cyberpunk Red. I was on a short run of that, and I was basically a hacker and a fabricator. Oh yeah, I, I played a villain. I played the the group's villain in Cyberpunk once. That was really fun because mm-hmm. I was the one funding our missions, but oh, it nice. was also very anxious because they kept on asking for money. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I I like Cyberpunk, but it's very crunchy. It is very crunchy. Cyberpunk is a very crunchy game. Like Vampire, I feel is like very forgiving. Uh, fifth edition D and D is a lot more forgiving than previous iterations. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, West End Star Wars is very, very, is one of the most simple systems I've ever seen in my entire life and one of the most functional for that genre. Yeah, West End yeah. Star Wars, very surprised. How how much that still kind of holds up. It's just D6s. You just add points to your thing and that's it. You don't have yep. any worries. Yep. So, yeah. Uh, well, is there anything else you'd like to talk say, say about Salise as we are uh, wrapping up? I'm getting the rap signal somewhere in Canada okay. right now. <laughs> okay. Um, honestly, just I'm hoping this season we get a chance for her to have some growth, kind of really deal with her her la- her loss of community with tear yeah and then uh also survive whatever masood's going to throw at us because <laughs> <laughs> i'm concerned uh yeah you get to see these characters you know uh, and masood came out swinging i was like we're gonna die on the, the premiere <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's bold it's bold <laughs> It was bold, and I was just like, we were just sitting here chilling. Why, why? We tried to just go have a drink, and now this happened. Look at where we are now. Now we're on the run. Uh, I, I the, 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 it very much kind of, well, not quite on the same level, but still, like, you know, like the beginning of Endgame, I'm like, okay, we're going to kill a Loki. <laughs> I'm like, oh, so we're starting out this way? <laughs> okay, <Yeah>. cool. <laughs> like, how much worse are things going to get? Okay, much worse. All right, okay. Uh, well, I hope Silly survives. Uh, so do I. I have less confidence in Ravenloft. Um, 
but good luck. There are worse things in life in Ravenloft, though. So, especially when yeah. is DMing. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh... I have now gone in death saves twice in 12 episodes so oh. on, on Black Dice, so I don't know how much longer Fen is going to live. <laughs> so don't, don't grow too attached emotionally, maybe. I, can, I just keep saying we spent too much on art. We spent too much on art. You can't die yet. Yeah, that is val- valid, right? Like, uh, I think, like, the moment you buy cosplay, Fen's going to die. <laughs> like, uh, like, yep. like, yeah, yeah. Yep. Or, like, or if become... you pr- purchase fan art for yourself, you're like, that's when that character goes. Yeah, yeah. Well, yep. uh, Tiny to pass. thank you so much for being on the show uh, and always being wonderful and always being, like, the kindest person at cons, at least to me, uh, especially for us both being introverts. I remember us at Game Hole Con both boy- being like, ooh, crowds are scary, and just standing in the middle of a crowd <laughs> and staring at everybody. And then it's like, we should go get a beer. You want to get a beer? <laughs> yes, let's leave right now. Yes, I would like to go now. Thank you. Uh yeah, you have always been such a wonderful, positive part of the community, and I'm so glad more people are getting to know that now. So thank you for well, being on the you. show. And I'm excited to play Selyse in uh, Idol Champions 2. I can't wait. Mm-hmm. I, I need to go unlock her and make sure that my idling has now given me enough gold to actually unlock her. You got to get, get the gold. That's, that's the whole point is that loot. Yep. I mean, who doesn't like getting loot like without actually being there? So. <laughs> right? All right. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you so much to our wonderful guest. Have a great day. Bye. Bye, y'all.